Hello everyone, this is Harley from Our NFL, and in today's video, we are going to walk around the farm and the house, and we're going to see everything that is flowering and fruiting. So let's get started. So here we are at the farm in Punta Gorda. So the first thing that I'm going to point out that is flowering and, or almost flowering, it is actually budding out, is actually the Cecropia. Now this Cecropia is here in the ground, and as you see, those are actually the buds of the Cecropia, and these are going to open up soon to flowers and from those flowers hopefully we'll get fruit now this cecropia was actually fruiting at the time when i bought it but i actually wasn't able to get the fruits because i was in colombia and i believe the squirrels ate it but as you see it's also pushing out strong new growth so i'm really looking forward to this cecropia now moving on over here now this is in the front of my farm now right over here in between some trees i actually have some lychees and long guns but actually out of the lychees and long guns there's only one long gun that is actually flowering currently and this is the bq long gun as you see the long gun is very beautiful now these are actually the flower buds and as you see it's just waiting for a good rain now i have been watering these but as you can tell it's not enough to actually spark these to flower but i really like how the long gun flowers look they kind of just look like little balls and they kind of look like little long gun so I really like the long gun. Now I actually have my lychees over there and more over here, but those are not flowering. So we're just gonna move on. Now I really don't even know if I want the long gun to even hold fruit this year because, you know, I just want them to grow roots in the ground. So the next tree that we're gonna check out and see its flowers and fruit is actually the strawberry tree. Now I believe this is Mutinga calbura is a botanical name, but as you see the strawberry tree, now I actually haven't watered this thing whatsoever, but as you see, it's still flowering. Now I actually should put more more mulch around this strawberry tree because as you see it does kind of look sad and it is kind of lanky but nonetheless the strawberry tree is fruiting as you see it is holding little baby green fruits right here as you see this is kind of what they look like once they've been pollinated and overall just all over this tree we have pollinated fruits but the reason we don't have any ripen and ready to pick is just because we've been in drought here in Punta Gorda and Florida overall so soon we're gonna get the rain so i'm just really excited but as you see this tree is just capable to flower and fruit despite its drought conditions that we're in and it's just really overall a really good tree to have in your food forest and it's really easy to propagate as well so let's go on to the next tree that is flowering and fruiting now if you watch my videos you know that i've cut off my mango flowers that were actually flowering a few months ago like a month ago i cut the flowers off just because my mangoes are really young right now and i just replanted this past year and i really still need to mulch them overall you know this is actually namdak mai right here so we're actually going to move more back into the middle of the farm where more things are going to be flowering and fruiting okay just enter the farm there's actually a sugar apple right here and it actually is flowering although very little as you see there's a little dot right here on the sugar apple that's actually the flower you see where my pinky is but i don't even know if i'll let these sugar apples flower because like i said even, same with the mangoes you know i really want them to focus on growing vegetatively as you see i didn't even notice but here's another flower as you see it's so tiny it's right here anyways around my farm there's actually a lot of sugar apples that are starting to flower but like i said i'm not sure if i'll actually let them hold fruit i might let a few of them hold fruit i'm not sure now i actually do have a hog plum back here flowering right now and it actually isn't fruiting but it is flowering so i'm really happy for this hog plum i believe it's spondias purpia so here's a hog plum it's kind of hard to see the flowers because they flower right off the trunk or right off the branches of the tree as you see this is a beautiful little red flower and this is actually the red hog plum. And as you see going all the way up the branches, you see it does have these flowers and they're just budding out. It looks really pretty actually. And I believe it's really easy to actually propagate this fruit tree. Now hog plums are actually really good. It's actually a really good fruit. I eat a lot of them in Colombia. And here too, when they're in season, I actually bought a lot of them from John Painter. But I was actually not successful in propagating any seeds. And like I said, I heard it's really easy to propagate this. You just have to cut a piece off and literally stick it in the ground. That's how easy it is to propagate. But as you see, going down all the way down the hog plum, as you see, this is the tag Bundius purpurea. And I actually got this from Top Tropicals, I believe. It's kind of cool because it's kind of like a Djibouti cob going all the way down you know how the flowers and fruits so this is one to look forward to now actually more over here now this is actually more towards the front but actually here's another hog plum this one's actually not as abundant in flowers like my other one this is actually a yellow hog plum we just saw the red and this is actually yellow variety but as you see the flowers are coming nonetheless and actually back here we have kiwi yam mangoes that's actually holding fruit and i still have to cut this off but i actually just want to show you guys the flowers and fruit just because i do really like how little mangoes look like as you see this is the kiwi yam mango but i'm actually going to take that pinnacle off i actually did cut it but it actually still fruited all on there and as you see it's still pushing out new flower buds 
So we're gonna let this mango grow here and we're gonna check out the back of the farm. So the fruit trees actually in the back of my farm are more shaded than the ones I actually have in the front or right here in the middle where you're seeing. Although this is shaded, it does get a lot of sunlight during the daytime. But this is actually my row of Nona's. As you see, all my sugar apples are regrowing back. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now, actually, my starfruits are fruiting, but I actually harvested all the fruit of them. So going more back here is where the back of my farm is. And the one fruit tree that is actually flowering or fruiting, what I meant to say, is actually my Macaw Sapodidia or Nispero. As you see, this is a dwarf Sapodidia. And going up to it, you see the fruits have really developed overall. You know, I can really notice them now from a distance. And they're really big. I really like how they look these over here look like a big family to be honest i think this one is the biggest uh sapodidia that i have but overall it's just really cool looking i'm really excited to eat them you know i really love sapodidia and overall i'm just excited for this tree to grow bigger and you know to overall harvest it in the future so this is continuing the back area of my farm and although not flowering right now this is my gefner at the moya as you see and it actually is pushing on all this new growth and i believe it's gonna flower soon but i'm not sure if i'll let this tree flower yet just because I really want this at the moment to grow. It's just really pretty. It's just a really pretty tree overall and I really want to trim it to be really beautiful. Now back here, I actually have a dream at the moment. And I actually saw a pair of flowers, I believe, on this stream at the Modia, but I'm not sure if I'll let it grow as well. But as you can tell, I really love at the Modia. And continuing on back here is actually something that's holding fruit right here. This is actually the Juliet mango. And I'm not even sure if I'll let this hold fruit because I believe it has anthracnose or something. As you see, it was able to hold fruit and set fruit. So this is actually a nice little size mango right here, uh, the Juliet mango. So although this mango is a good size, as you see all the way going down in the trunk, it actually has a pretty thick trunk. As you see going all the way up, it's just a really beautiful tree. Now I got this Juliet tree from Leaf in West Palm Beach for a really good price. But as you see, once I put it in the ground, it flowered and just had a bunch of fruit. So we'll see if we'll keep fruit on the Juliet mango. Now aside from mangoes, now I actually want to show you my avocados that have been flowering back here. And although they are flowering, they actually haven't sent fruit. I actually had uh, my Ulala avocado was actually flowering, but it actually didn't set any fruit. So going back here, now I just want to mention something before we pass it. This is actually a June plum, and this June plum is actually holding fruit, but these June plums are actually, you know, they haven't been in the best condition because I haven't really been able to water this June plum too much. They kind of look a little raggedy, but overall you can still eat them like this. But as you see, this is not really good. Oof, my June plum is kind of looking uh, sad. So I probably should water this before I go. But nonetheless, this is holding fruit. And this is more in the back of my property. Now, before I pass it as well, we actually have a... This is my main sapota. I believe it's Poteria sapota. Yeah, Poteria sapota. And as you see, it kind of looks rough because I haven't been able to water it. But I actually gave it a lot of water today. And overall, as you see, it's pushing on new growth. But this is actually getting ready to flower as well. As you see, all along the trunk of the Mame Sapote, there are actually little buds that look like that. And going up the Sapote, just pushing on new growth. This one, I really can't wait till we get the rains because I believe that one really push on a lot of new growth and flowers as well. Continuing on back here to the back of my farm. Now, here we have some avocados that are actually flowering. And like I said, I won't let them really hold fruit because as you're going to see right now, they're actually pretty small. Although these are grafted too. So this is actually a my Marcus pumpkin avocado. As you see, there's a tag Marcus pumpkin and I got this from Leaf in West Palm Beach. But as you see, the Marcus pumpkin avocado is not only pushing on new growth, but those are actually flowers on the Marcus pumpkin avocado. So it's really cool to know that these are capable of already flowering and although i won't let them fruit it's cool to see that they're pushing on new growth and they're growing nonetheless but as you see this marcus pumpkin avocado is still really small it's still really tiny it's not that thick but as you see all along the base it's actually pushing out for new growth so moving on to the back of my property we have a few more things that are flowering now for the most part they're all, all avocados but as you see we just have also two sugar apples just planted all around my farm this is just an example of a sugar apple tree that is flowering as you see, those are actually three little sugar apple flowers. And as you see, they're really tiny and baby, but nonetheless, it's still flowering and fruiting. So I'm really excited for sugar apple season this year. I will let a few uh, trees actually flower and fruit on the sugar apples. So I'm just really excited for the season. So moving on back here, we actually have some avocados that are getting ready to bud out and flower. As you see, this is the choquette. And as you see, the choquette is actually pushing out new flower buds. So I'm just really excited today because overall, all the avocados now, they look more established than they ever have before. And even through the drought that we have right now, they're still able to keep pretty cool because they're planting under the canopy of oak trees. So overall, all the avocados are really just, you know, trying to 
to grow and I'm really looking forward to these spring rains. This is the avocado that's showing a lot of activity that I'm excited for. This is the Russell avocado and I got this from Solcada Grove. Actually, my older brother got me as a Christmas gift, but overall the Russell avocado is pushing out. It's exploding with all these new buds all over. It's just overall a really beautiful avocado tree and I'm really looking forward to when these buds flower just because I know the tree is gonna be really beautiful in the future when it grows. And I'm just, oof, I can't wait till, I really can't wait till the long fruit. You know, I really just, I really love avocados and the more varieties I have here, the better. And this is just proof that, you know, everything is connecting and growing here well at the farm. So continuing on, I actually have some other avocados right here. Now this is Monroe and as you see Monroe, like all my other avocados are just ready to bud out. This is gonna look so pretty in the future when they're all grown out. And if you don't know my future plans, I'm actually gonna trim these trees in the future to allow more sunlight in. But currently, you know, it's fine right now because the avocados are a bit shaded. And honestly, it helps me out because I can't come to the farm so often. You know, sometimes when I can't come in its drought, they're kept nice and shaded. You know, the moisture in the soil doesn't escape as fast. So right here, I actually have a Ulala avocado, the super hash. And believe it or not, this one actually just flowered and it didn't hold on to any fruit, but I'm happy because, you know, it's focusing on the growth. But as you see, this is where the flowers actually shut out from. And overall, I'm just really excited that the super hash avocado is growing. Ulala avocado is actually a really heavy producer here in Florida. So overall, I'm just really excited for that one. So we're still at the very back of my farm. Now I actually have a few things here in the ground that are fruiting that I recently planted. This is actually a Thai dwarf mulberry and this is actually fruiting. You know, despite being in drought, it's still able to fruit. Now I did water this today. This is actually a dead leaf right here. But as you see, that is a fruit. Now I actually planted this because there is a tortoise actually living here on the property. So the tortoise loves to eat fruit just like me. And I actually planted this tree just so he can eat and it's really dwarf. So although I really don't eat these, you know, it's cool to have this already fruiting here. And actually in a little crevice right here next, to the avocados and everything. I actually planted an air layer of the strawberry tree that we saw out there in the front. And as you see, this strawberry tree is actually fruiting and flowering nonetheless. And this one's actually in a little better condition just because it's shaded. And like I said earlier, this soil is able to maintain moisture, you know, so the plant actually isn't always hot and it doesn't look droopy. It's able to actually get moisture from around. And also, as you see, this strawberry tree is holding fruit as well all over. And it's just cool to see all the fruit that I'm gonna have here in the near future. But strawberry tree fruit is good fruit, but you know, it's definitely not one of my favorite fruits. It's not like uh, a no no. But this fruit nonetheless is one of those fruits that just fruits in abundance. And I can give some of this to the tortoise and you know give it to my friends and family and also it's really easy to propagate you know to air layer and to spread to uh you know to everyone else see so you guys so actually back here i think i have one more thing one more fruit tree that is actually flowering and fruiting and it's actually a baby mango which i actually forgot to cut off the flowers the panicle of but this one's actually an ice cream mango. And as you see, this ice cream mango is actually in a little kind of hidden location. But as you see, I forgot to cut off the panic on this one, but I said, you know what? I'm just gonna let nature do its thing. And as you see, it did set fruit, the ice cream mango. And it's so tiny, it's just a little graph. But overall, I really love the ice cream mango. As you see, there's a tag ice cream. And nonetheless, I'm gonna let this mango grow here. This mango tree, I intend to get really big. It's just on the borderline of my property. And as you see, just going all the way down here, I did plant some other fruit trees down there, such as ignivera species and, you know, some citruses. But Overall, that's pretty much it of what's flowering and fruiting here at my farm in Punta Gorda. Now, before we go, I actually forgot that I have a long gun right here. I believe it's another BQ, but it's actually flowering. Surprisingly, this long gun is actually planted in the shade for the most part. So that is why the panicle is actually kind of short and dwarf. But nonetheless, this long gun is flowering and it's so cool because it's so short too. So this long gun will be allowed to grow really big. So let's go check out what's flowering and fruiting at my house. So here we are at the house now in Bradenton, Florida, and we're actually gonna check out now what's flowering and fruiting. Now here at my house in Bradenton, now I actually have more things that are both flowering and fruiting only because here I have a steady water source. So walking right by here, we see this beautiful Relinia. Although it's not flowering, I just wanted to point it out just because it was beautiful. But going on, we see we have the mango tree over here. Now this is actually a camp mango. And if you look closely, the panicles is just loaded with little baby camp mangoes. And I noticed some of them have this little black spot on them, which kind of looks like black spot disease. So I'm not sure some of them fall off and some of them actually don't have anything uh, no markings on them so I'm just hoping that those that don't have anything actually will survive and turn into mangoes but overall as you see we had a really good fruit set overall almost every panicle is filled with at least one mango and in Florida it's usually about one or two mangoes per panicle that survive and especially for a size like this for a camp mango uh, this size so now moving on as you see we have many papayas that are actually both flowering and fruiting many of them are holding fruit right now that I, we some that we can actually harvest this is actually the dwarf Malayan papaya and as you see even at this height 
we can even we're able to even harvest fruit very easily this stands about six feet because yeah it's just about as tall as i am and as you see right here we actually have a beautiful fruit that we can basically harvest right now but we're gonna leave it on for about another day or so but overall it's just a really beautiful fruit and these papayas are really good i've been harvesting them for the past few days and as you see up there we just have much more papayas ready for us to harvest now right over here right next to it this is actually a florida grande peach and believe it or not but this peach is actually fruiting and it's holding a peach for us so luckily we got one peach right there and we actually have another peach somewhere on this tree. And I actually tried this peach last year and it was super good. So I can't wait to eat this. And I believe there's another one on this tree somewhere. I just see the tree stands about six feet tall or maybe more than that. But overall, I'm really just waiting for next year to, be, to get more of a peach harvest. I'm just really happy to see, you know, that we have a lot of fruit activity. And even back here, we have some papayas right there. They're actually flowering and fruiting. As you see, this papaya is just loaded with flowers and actually it is flowering right there. And I believe that's a papaya that actually said now this would be the first papaya that's a fruit on this papaya so i'm really looking forward to that and this was a papaya from seed as you see overall it's just a really thick papaya and it's not like my other ones all my other ones fruited at a really young age and were able to hold fruit but this one just kept growing really thick and tall and now it's starting to fruit so i think the fruit will actually be much bigger just because it took its time to grow in size and overall it's just really good looking compared to my other ones these are the other ones that as you see this one just stands so much taller and these papayas actually have been fruiting and i've been harvesting wow so i think this is the papaya wasp that everyone talks about that destroys your papaya i think it's backing away now i really don't want to see this papaya wasp on here so we're gonna try to actually ooh. He went away. As you see, moving on, we actually have some papayas right here that can be harvested. And this right here was actually the cold damage that we got in the recent winter in December. These papayas actually suffered because papayas are actually a very tropical plant. But nonetheless, this is just a cosmetic thing. You can actually still eat the insides. The insides are very good. Now over here in this area, we actually have a lot of anonas, and mangoes, bananas, but none of it is actually flowering or fruiting currently. We actually do have some sugar apples right back there that are actually flowering. But in a few more months, this will actually all be flowering and hopefully fruiting. As you see, the red llama is just pushing out new growth. Hopefully soon we'll see uh, red llama flowers. But continuing on, we're actually gonna to move to the front of the property where we're actually gonna find some other fruit trees that are flowering and fruiting. For now, we're just gonna leave this right over here and we're gonna continue on to see the fruit trees. So right over here in the front of my yard, I actually have some things that are flowering. Like I said, I have sugar apples that are actually fruiting everywhere. As you see, this is just an example of one sugar apple that is flowering. This is a little sugar apple right here in the flower. But like I said, I'm not sure if I'll let my sugar apples actually fruit this year just because I really wanted them to grow vegetatively, even the ones here at my house. And here's something else that I'm really excited to and looking forward to flowering and fruiting hopefully this year. This is actually a Fuyu persimmon. And as you see, the Fuyu persimmon is actually pushing out its flower. This is actually the Fuyu persimmon flower bud right here. I actually really like how this Fuyu persimmon flower looks. It kind of looks like a mini Fuyu persimmon. So this one is I'm really looking forward to. And I'm actually going to be trading this tree along the years. I actually just planted another Fuyu persimmon over there in the main area. So hopefully in a few years, we're going to get abundant of fruits off of that. So moving on, we actually have a red lime tree right here, which I'm really excited for. Now, someone told me that red lime was actually more resistant to the citrus greening here in Florida. And as you see, this red lime is not only fruiting, as you see, this red lime is just loaded with fruits from the fruit set. But this lime tree is actually still flowering right here. And as you see, the lime flowers actually smell really good. I believe they're in the same family as the jasmine. The jasmine smells really good as well. But overall, I'm just really looking forward to this red lime tree because lime is something that I really love to consume too as a fruit. And citrus is kind of hard for us in Florida to grow. Now, it's actually easier to grow citrus in pot, as you see right here. Next to my cat, I actually have another citrus. Now, I believe this is the Eureka lemon. And as you see, the Eureka lemon is actually holding fruit right here. And it was flowering a few days ago. But overall, this Eureka lemon is in a, looks like a 25 gallon pot, I think. And it is holding fruit on various different branches. I actually did want to show everyone before I pass it, but I actually do have a lot of fruit on my miracle berry bushes. Now, miracle berries for me are actually a fruit tree or a fruit brush that actually fruit all year long. As you see, there's just fruit all in this miracle berry bush. This is actually a green one right here. But actually, all around the miracle berry, you could see it's just loaded with fruit and flowers. For example, that is just a fruit right here with some flowers. And as you see, we can go more in the bush. Guaranteed, we can find a fruit. As you see right down here, we actually have a fruit that we're gonna harvest because I wanna eat it with some lemon later and some water because it's super hot today. And if you eat these with lemon and water, it literally tastes like you're drinking lemonade. And I have a few miracle berry bushes here around the house. For example, here's another one and it just has like a 
some believe this is a jalapeno pepper just growing out of it so that's funny <laughs> and as you see i also have the miracle berry right here but moving on is something that i'm really happy to harvest and looking forward to in a few days as you see this area right here is kind of shaded by the oaks and the canopy so but throughout the day it kind of gets diluted sunlight but overall this area is just a really good place to grow jaboticaba so that's what i planted i did plant a jaboticaba tree and this is actually the sabra variety and believe it or not this sabra is actually holding fruit right now and it's planted in the ground this tree is probably about 10 to 12 years old as you see it's really thick it's really healthy too you know this soil believe it or not was pretty acidic on itself and this jaboticaba is actually holding fruit right over here as you see right here this jaboticaba is almost ready to harvest as you see it has two fruit on there and there's another one on this tree but the tree is but the fruit itself is turning from green to purple actually all around the jaboticaba itself you see it just has a nice purple bush going all around it so it's not ready to harvest yet but in a few more days it will be ready to harvest now there's actually another fruit on here that they will be ready to harvest in a few more days now it's actually over here that's why we went on this side just so we can get a better look at it but this is your bodhicaba actually as you see it's still really green this one was just like the other one a few days ago that's that's turning purple now but as you see this one will be ready to harvest too in a few days and i'm actually really excited because this will be my first fruit harvest off this tree once i planted it in the ground about a year ago and if you didn't know jabodi cobbas take some time to acclimate and to flower and fruit again once they're planted in the ground that's why you see a lot of them actually planted in pots because they're just easier to manage in pots but this one's actually a sabra which is actually not a heavy producer like the red so i'm actually looking to get a red jabodi cobbas around the same size as this sabra and i'm looking to plant it right over here where this hole is obviously i'll have to make it bigger but that's what i'm really looking forward to now there are some fruit trees over here that were, that were actually flowering and i'm really actually looking forward to them too this is a wax shampoo and now this tree is unfortunately not flowering but i've been seeing wax shampoos around that my friends have that have been flowering so any day now i think this one will start to send out some flower buds it's pretty big too but this is a Maha Chinook mango I have right here and all around this Maha Chinook is actually loaded with flower buds right there so it's about to push out now although this Maha Chinook is late to push in Bradenton nonetheless it's you know it's gonna push so I'm really looking forward to this this Maha Chinook I'll actually let fruit maybe you know some fruit because believe it or not this Maha Chinook is actually bigger than the Kent mango I have and the girthness is still pretty thick but I don't know you know I might change my mind and actually might let it grow vegetatively you know keep pruning it and tipping it as the time goes so right over here it's a jackfruit tree now i was really looking forward to this jackfruit tree because believe it or not it was flowering and it still is flowering it sent out the male flower but actually the male flower actually started turning kind of black and rotten now i did look this up and it says some type of fungus when there's too much humidity in the air so it's true right here in Bradenton. there's been a lot of kind of moisture and humidity so this was the male jackfruit flowers and as you can see it kind of like I don't know what it did it kind of all kind of turned black on us all moldy so i'm not too sure how to prevent this i'm just gonna leave it on for now and i actually think i have oh wow what what is going on here Ooh, i think we have a fight so right here we actually have a lizard fight going on unexpectedly oof now i did not expect that to happen on camera guys i'm so sorry moving on i think this will be a jackfruit flower as well a jackfruit male flower because it looks pretty thick it kind of looks like it's going to give birth to the jackfruit uh, male flower so moving on i currently have some other things that were flowering like uh, lychees now this is a sweetheart lychee and although it's really small it has been actually flowering for us the past few days but it looks like the panicle itself doesn't have any flowers left and i'm glad that fruit didn't set because as you see it's, it's actually so really small so i'm gonna let it you know grow vegetatively for a few years and actually right over here behind it i have the long gun which is a relative i believe now this long gun tree i'm actually really excited and looking forward to its flower and fruit in the future it's because longan is a fruit that I love a lot. And as you see right up top here, the longan is just flowering like crazy. And these longan flowers have had pollinators on them all day. These longan flowers are not only really smelly, as in like they actually smell really good. They remind me a lot like the jasmine and citrus flowers. Believe it or not, they actually have a really good scent. But longan definitely has to be one of my favorite fruits overall. You know, they're just really good. You know, I don't know which one I like more, lychees or longans but I kind of like long guns more to be honest, but oof, lychees are so good as well. So overall, I'm just really looking forward to these type of flowers and fruits in the future. And especially for the, when these fruit trees actually grow very big and able to support a large fruit harvest. But overall, that's pretty much it. That's flowering and fruiting here at, at my house. Now I actually I do have a few things that I didn't go over and I do have some mangoes that are actually budding out. This is a raw honey mango that will actually be budding out, but I'll be tipping this mango nonetheless just because I want to let it grow. But overall, I'm just really looking forward to all the fruit that my house is going to be able to grow just because this soil here at my house is just so much more richer in my opinion than at my farm but you know overall as the years go on my farm will be just like this and i also kind of like my house a little more just because i do have a steady source of irrigation so everything here at my house is able to be kept much
much more moist and you know and as you know when fruit trees start to flower and if you want fruit to set they really need a lot of water to be able to set fruit so just here at my house just i'm able to do that much more easier so i kind of think at my house too i like to keep all my really good plants so i'm able to graft on them and you know use them as graft wood in the future so thank you guys so much for watching this video on what's flowering and fruiting both at my farm and my house i can't wait till in a few months where i'm actually able to harvest these fruit and especially for mango season that's coming up if you guys have a fruit tree that you recommend me plant here at my house please let me know in the comments i'm always trying to diversify my house and the fruit trees that i have here so thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you have a great day and bye bye now